Hello. So in this video, we discuss the remaining types of uh, nonlinear invariables models to be covered by this lecture. And let us start with reciprocal model. So this is the form, very basic form of the reciprocal regression model. Uh, the interpretation of the coefficient um, is basically identical to the linear model. Uh, the only difference is that as the independent variable instead of x, you analyze 1 over x. So let's say if x stands for um, output per worker, then the inverse value will stand for worker per the unit of output, something like this. So on this slide, you can see illustrations for reciprocal models with positive beta 1 and negative beta 1. So the characteristic feature of these types of models is that uh, as x approaches infinity, like when the value of independent variable increases, uh, then y will approach some asymptotic value, but never actually take this value. So in this model, we naturally assume that there is some minimum or maximum possible value of y. y can only approach this value, but y will never actually take this value. So this is the definition of asymptotic value. Um, as I told you, these types of models are relatively rare. That's why, uh, to be honest, I cannot come up with any good examples from uh, economic theory which would make the use of this model suitable. But as I said before, if you do, then you can get some additional points. Okay, then logarithmic reciprocal model. So it's similar, but in our case, uh, instead of representing dependent variable as a linear term, we represent it as the natural logarithm. So this types of model, this type of model can be used for um, estimating production function. So according to the theory, like neoclassical theory of production, uh, when the level of production is relatively small, then the firm experiences increasing returns to scale, which means that per each additional unit of x, uh, the increase in production is bigger and bigger, and then after some critical threshold is achieved, the firm experiences decreasing returns to scale. So that's why function turns to be concave. And finally, polynomial models. So here you can see a very simple example for the polynomial model. Um, the most common one, actually. So it's easy to see that this model is just a quadratic function. So we use polynomial models uh, when we have some intuition that the effect of x on y will actually depend on the value of x. To some extent, uh, this is true for any kind of um, regression model which is not linear in variables. So we would also assume that uh, the slope of the function is not constant. But in this case, we assume that this effect is symmetrical. For instance, young employees have lower wages in comparison to middle-aged employees. And middle-aged employees have higher wages in comparison to elder employees. So what is the logic behind this? When you are relatively young and you do not have enough experience, your income is relatively low. For sure, it's lower uh, in comparison to workers who have already accumulated some experience. Let's say people around 40, maybe 50. However, when people become older, their productivity decreases, or at least it decreases, presumably, and uh, this results in decreasing wages. 
So again, we assume that there is some maximum uh, value of income, uh, and uh, this maximum value of income corresponds to some age, and then it starts to decrease. Uh, analogously, the moderate level of income inequality causes positive effect on economic growth because it provides some incentives to invest in human capital. If you know that doctors have much higher level of income than nurses, then it makes sense to spend additional five years in university and become a doctor, if you're lucky enough to have enough money for this, of course. So yeah, some moderate level of income inequality, when it's not that dramatic, can stimulate economic growth. However, high level of income inequality causes an adverse effect on economic growth. When there are many people in poverty, there is political instability, uh, people do not have enough funds in order to invest in human capital to finance education and health care. And that's why high level of income inequality is harmful for economic growth. What I would like to underline is those two statements uh, are not based on my intuition. Actually, you know, this is just some conclusion on many, many studies who deal with exploring the links between age and income and income inequality and economic growth. Again, I already told you, but I would like to reinforce this one more time. Uh, your econometric research, the way you specify the model, uh, your choice of variables has to be justified. It has to be justified by theory or it has to be justified by some prior research. Okay, so here you can find some examples. Um, again, this is the general form of this model where beta 1 stands for coefficient of linear term of x and beta 2 stands for the coefficient of quadratic term of x. So when both beta 1 and uh, beta 2 are negative, uh, then the function takes this shape. If beta 2 is positive and beta 1 is negative, then it takes this shape. And if both variables are negative, then it looks like this. Um, again, you do not specify the coefficients. Uh, however, if you know that um, according to the theory, your function should look like this, like both variables shall be negative, and then you obtain something like this, it might be a sign that you made a mistake in model specification. Okay, so just to make a conclusion, how to make a good choice of the functional form of the regression model. First of all, you check the theory. Uh, during this lecture, we discussed uh, the example of the gravity model of international trade. So this model is a multiplicative model. In order to be able to estimate this, you have to make the logarithmic transformation. Uh, analogously, uh, Kuznets curve, something we discussed um, during the second or the third lecture, tells you that the relationship between income inequality and per capita income is described by the polynomial regression model. That's why it's a good idea to use the polynomial regression model when you do not add only linear term of per capita income, but also the quadratic term. Of course, in your regression model, you do not specify signs of beta 1 and beta 2. You can just check whether the obtained coefficients are in line with your expectations or they are not in line with your expectations. So, yeah, just to conclude on the first point. First of all, you check the theory. In economics, behind most uh, frequently used regression models, there is some piece of economic theory with mathematical equations describing the relationship between the variables of interest. And you should base your regression model on the relevant piece of theory. Second, you should check out the elasticity and do some raw data analysis. So, raw data analysis is not exactly the regression model. 
uh, this is when you observe um, the position of combinations of the dependent and independent variable on the graph. Not very clear. I will give you an example. So let us open the Gretel again. And by the way, using this command, you can run a regression model uh, with one independent variable and make some initial analysis. So first, I analyze how trade depends on GDP product. Um, actually, based on this, uh, you cannot notice any relationship between trade and GDP product. Of course, it appears later when you run the regression model, but based on this graph, there is no relationship. So let us make another trial. And now we will analyze the relationship between natural log of trade and the log of GDP product. Here it is. So now it's actually possible to run the regression model. Uh, the results of estimation are statistically significant. And you can see the positive relationship between GDP product and trade. So this is just an example of raw data analysis. So this is something you might not include uh, in your work, like let's say project or thesis, but it's very helpful to do this in advance. And finally, if signs of coefficients contradict the logic, like you can see that income inequality improves economic growth, or let's say um, gender equality harms economic growth, you know, something like this. And this is definitely in contrast to what is discussed in economic theory. Then it might be a sign that you made a mistake. You misspecified the model. Uh, you've chosen the wrong functional form. Okay, so I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I see you in the next one.